All right, so let me get this straight. You're telling me to remove the license plate on my motorcycle, since no one's paying for the registration, the police aren't checking anyway. You know, that's a pretty good idea, because with the savings, I can buy more 762 by 39 Oh, hey, <laughs> didn't see you there. Just wearing my Type 81 in the garage, just like every other Tuesday. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why did I click on this video? Why am I here? Why is this guy so average? All questions I've asked myself. Now, you click on this video because you probably want to modify your, your cheap Type 81 or Type 56, that, that pertains here too. Uh, but mine specifically was a Type 81 that I bought. Um, I think the 81s have the, the single grenade pouch, and the 56 usually have like the, the two on each side. Um, to my limited knowledge, I think that's the, the most glaring difference. But the point of this video is how to take your 20 to $25 Type 81 or Type 56 um, Chicom, as they're known as, uh, Chinese chest rig, modify it a little bit to turn it into something a little bit better. In this video, I'll be showing you some of the uh, little tips and tricks um, that I did to, to make it uh, make mine what it is. So stay tuned, and this will be an arts and crafts video. Ah, uh, the Type 81 Chinese Communist Party, aka Chicom Chest Rig. Used from Einstein's inception until TikTok was invented. I don't know. They use these things forever. Um, and as a civilian, it's a very good, cheap way in. If you shoot at the range, you actually want to practice some reloads. Um, it's it's a really cheap ticket to entry. Um, 20, 25 bucks on Amazon, eBay, wherever. We'll get you uh, either a new one, a reproduction, a uh, used one. We're not going to go into a whole historical deep dive here. But... On the Type 81, this is how it'll come. You'll have like four main magazine pouches, typically for the AK-47. However, this will work with AR mags as well. Um, and you have a grenade pouch on either side. Now, as a civilian, we don't own grenades. Or if you do, don't tell me about it. Um, but they're not really good for anything else, and they're kind of a waste of storage. Um, I mean, it's kind of a pathetic amount. You can't really put much of value in there. Maybe some tactical tendies or snickers or something to that effect. But it's more effective just to remove it. And that's the first modica modification I made. Remove both of these guys. And with that space that it'll, it'll uh, create, I actually bought some one-inch uh, nylon webbing to essentially make some, some molly on either side. Um, and with that molly webbing, you can put uh, some pouches on there to store some batteries, store some... More tactical tendies, whatever. It's just a great way to give yourself more adequate storage. Um, I think in, in these I have like a little right in the rain notebook. I've got some batteries. I've got a multi-tool and, and just some other stuff too. Um, you know, shit hit the fan scenario, whatever. Whatever kind of scenario you want to come up with. The zombies are going to attack, you know, put, a, put your zombie spray or something in there. Um, but it's just a great way to store stuff on your chest rig since there's these are very limited in space. Modification number two was to enhance the flaps on the uh, on, on the magazine pouches. This is how it comes to you on the Type 81. You have these stupid little wooden dowels that uh, actually keeps the, the flap in, in place. But, I mean, these... <laughs> you're going to be taking some time to undo that. I mean, I can't even imagine doing that under stress. So... I removed the dowels. Actually, the material that I removed the grenade pouches from, I repurposed that material and re-sewed it onto these flaps to, to make them bigger and to make them cover the whole magazine. And I also put a little bit of nylon, a um, little bit of that nylon webbing on there as well, just as an easier, easier way to, to get to your magazine. And I also put Velcro on there too. Much quicker, better way to retain it. Modification number three is to actually, off Amazon, you can get a little pack of these buckles for dirt cheap. So I believe it's a three quarter inch, let me measure that really quick. 
because I believe this strap is a three quarter inch. Yep, so make sure the buckle's a three quarter inch um, and you're actually gonna put it on the, the strap that goes around your waist. Because believe it or not, these things don't, don't even come with a buckle. You're, <laughs> you're gonna have to tie this strap around you, make a little knot back there. Um, but the buckle makes it so much easier. I think I already put it on this one preemptively, but yeah, it gets you a little pack. Yeah, so it gets you a three quarter inch um, loop buckle. So then you can uh, just snap it around your back, makes it so much easier. Modification number four. It's kind of a sneaky one, and um, you don't have to do this one. This is kind of optional. But the color that mine came um, is supposed to be OD green. I mean, it's definitely like a green green, kind of a bright green. So not good for camouflage. I just, it's kind of an ugly color. So five bucks at the grocery store or on Amazon. Uh, Rit dye, I got like an eight floor ounce bottle of it. Um, I actually dyed this. So you can see the, the color um, contrast there. It's, it's a little bit darker. I was hoping to get a little bit, a couple shades darker, but I'm okay with it. It's definitely more of a olive drab or maybe even like a slightly forest green. Um, much better than the color of this. So, yep. All right, and here's everything you'll need to turn your Type 81 from basic to average. So first things first, we'll be uh, dyeing it with uh, dark brown to, to darken the color a little bit. This is the one inch nylon webbing that I bought. Uh, it was, I bought it off Amazon. I believe I bought, the smallest I could buy was 10 yards, so it's like 30 feet of it. Uh, but it was only about 10 bucks. Be using a little bit of shoe goo. Um, you can get a bottle, uh, how big is this one? About four fl floor ounces. I think this is about eight bucks or so. Uh, Velcro, um, I think that was about five bucks. You'll need your buckle to allow for a three quarter inch uh, loop. A basic sewing kit, or if you have it, a sewing machine. Uh, I cheaped out and, and sewed everything by hand. It takes longer, but trust me, it can be done if you have enough willpower. Some basic tools, um, something to measure, either a ruler or a tape measure, a pen to mark, and scissors to cut stuff. And here's a couple pouches um, that I'll be attaching in to replace the grenade pouches. Uh, these in particular, I think we're like 15 bucks for a two pack on Amazon. Um, you know, they're, they're average quality. Um, specific size, in case you're wondering, is six and a half by 4.7 by two and a half. And then if you want to put any extra patches or, or what have you on there. I know I've kind of been all over the place with the order of things, but now we're going to be starting our arts and crafts project. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove all of these wooden dowels right here, as well as a little bit of fabric that it comes with. And then I'm also going to be removing um, both grenade pouches on either side. And the tool I'll be using is, it, it should come with every sewing kit there is. Um, I'm not really sure that what it's technically called. Uh, it's like a thread remover or some kind of little reamer. Um, basically gets in there and kind of um, cuts the threads to, to remove crap. So, here we go. see that on camera so it looks like the threading on this grenade pouch is actually sharing the thread of the of the AK pocket that we that we want to save right there so I'll probably just take scissors and just cut the rest of that fabric off not actually cut the threads kind of pick out the, the loose threading in there.
There you go, that's one anyway. And obviously, you know, just clean up more of the loose threading as you go. But that's the idea. Do the same to the other side. Save your material, especially these little flaps, because we're going to use this material to add on to the flaps right here so it covers your magazines better. So don't get rid of those. Second round of modification, we're gonna be doing the writ die. Now the easiest way to do this, if you have a giant uh, stainless steel pot, say for like chicken stock or something, um, that's gonna be the easiest way to do it. Um, put that on the stove, Add water, boil the water, add your writ dye, and add your Tricom rig uh, to the pot itself, and then and then you know stir it and make sure it it dies that way. Uh, I don't have a big pot like that, so this might be a little more un in uh, la, 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 might be a little more unconventional. But I'm gonna use a camping stove, and I'm gonna do three pots worth of water. So I'll fill both of those, get them to boiling, pour them in a five gallon bucket with a lid and then heat one more pot of water, and then also add it to the five gallon bucket, and then add my red dye, and mix it all up in there. So, I'll be done my Tricom rig, and a couple other things too, um, those flaps that I told you to save, go ahead and dye those too, and then I also wanna dye my, uh, my little pouches a little bit darker, as well as my, my water bottle holder. So, whatever crap you wanna dye, go ahead and toss it in there too. It does feel like a witch's brew. Woo! There's all that crap in there. Alright. Where are you? Just 
Joy Damnation. You go in there. You two. You three. Everybody get in there. I took the bottle to see how long we did this for, but um, I think you do it every. I think you let it die for about 30 minutes. Maybe wrong on that. <laughs> Let me double check here. But I like to stir it about every 5 or 10 minutes. I'm sure it's all you need. Evenly distributed. Good bottle. Shake well, yep, whatever. 140. Stir consistently for 30 minutes. Well, I'm not going to do it for 30 minutes straight. <laughs> or until desired color is achieved. So basically 30 to 60 minutes. I mean, probably just do it for 30 minutes. See how it comes out. 30 minutes. Feels like I could just kind of agitate it. All right, and after your 30 to 60 minutes, and after you've been stirring it occasionally or continuously, as they say, uh, next step is to take your take your crap out. Actually, run it under a sink, um, under cold water, and get out all the uh, excess dye. Don't worry, it's still going to be darkened by the dye. You're not going to rid it of, of all the dye. It's just to get rid of the excess. All right, now once those grenade pouches are removed, you have a little bit of real estate here to play with. Now, our next step is going to be to take that one-inch nylon webbing and actually create... Um, some some molly webbing as you see here Now as an average guy with average research what I found is Molly is typically an inch apart vertically not into a perfect job here <laughs> But should be an inch apart vertically and an inch and a half um, Horizontally so you can see where I made those seams um, Should it's it's about again not perfect, but it's about an inch and a half spacing now with kind of limited spacing, because obviously this pouch kind of narrows as it, as it continues on, but with that, uh, so inch here, inch between, and another inch. So with the three inches there, um, I, was, I was able to get um, three, basically three molly slots, because, you know, again, these are inch and a half spaced. So I was, I was able to get uh, two rows of... Um, three columns, I guess, of, of molly webbing um, on these Type 81 rigs. Um, on the Type 56, you might have a little bit more room um, because you'll, I think there's like the two grenade pouches on either side. So once you remove those, you'll, you'll probably have a little bit more. But honestly, for the size of pouches that I'm putting on here, um, this, this is all you need. It's perfect. In fact, I only use um, like two slots and then I could have an open slot for something else, um, life straw, a knife, uh, a butterfinger, you know, whatever. All right, so I've cut two strips of uh, the nylon, uh, four and a half inches long total. And um, it'll help just to kind of brazen the ends here. Just so you don't get loose threading. There you go. All right, now put your two strips um, on the wing of your, your chest rig here. Um, I got them right here. And of course, make sure they're an inch apart. Inch right about, right about there. And go ahead and outline um, where the strips lie on your chest rig. This will help when you actually go to sew it, because believe me, you'll be Moving this chest rig around, you don't want to lose, you know, it's it's actual spot where it's supposed to be. Once you do that, go ahead and Mark off your inch and a half 
lines on the actual nylon as well, and that's where you're going to be sewing. That's the idea anyway. Now if you have a sewing machine, this will make your life a lot easier. Or if you want to buy one, yeah, I believe me, I went down this rabbit hole. Um, I think on Amazon or if you look elsewhere, you can get, um, I guess the two brands I'd kind of recommend, they're reputable, at least in the sewing world, from what I'm told, uh, is Singer or Brother. Um, a base or like super basic set will I think run you about what 100, 100 bucks, 120 bucks for like a very basic sewing machine. Uh, I cheaped out and just kind of taught myself how to hand sew. Obviously, hand sewing um, takes a little bit longer, but uh, on top of that, it's good. It's a good life skill to have too. So, um, whenever you're getting frustrated and you're kicking yourself for not buying a sewing machine, just just know that you're learning a very val valuable life skill. All right, first steps. First things first, obviously grab a sewing needle, where's the camera frame, there it is, and put your thread through the hole at the top, uh, I already did it, I mean, I, I trust you guys can do that on your own, alright, and then you're going to kind of unravel it until you get about as much <laughs> threading as you think you'll need, um, don't be afraid to, to use more material than you think you'll need, it's always better to use more, um, Cut it with more material than less material. Let's see, and then, and then with these two strands going, kind of, kind of even that up here. Oh, what the fuck's going on? All right, very hard to see on camera, but you see the the ends of the thread. You want to even them up like so. All right, and then just kind of pull it taut. All right, so with if you're a right-handed person, um, with your left hand, you're gonna kind of grab, while making this taut, kind of grab the ends here. Let me make this a little bit more even. All right, see how those ends are even right there? All right, that's what you want. All right, so, what you do, you're going to pull both ends of the string, just kind of keep it taut in your fingers. All right, and if you're a right-handed person, you're going to kind of pinch the end of it right there with your left hand and just kind of hold it there. All right, and with the needle end, you're gonna kind of bring it back around and you're gonna seat it also in your left hand, but just above just above that other thread that you're pinching. Like so. Once you do that, grab the lower end of the thread that you're still pinching with your left hand. And you're gonna wrap it around the needle. I do like four or five times, because now you're gonna create the little knot. So I wrapped it, I think it's like five or six times. You get the idea. Come on, camera focus. There we go. All right, now what you're gonna do is, with all that threading that you put around the needle, kinda encapsulate it with your left hand, and you're gonna pull, pull, pull. The idea is to make a knot right at the bottom of this string. If I succeeded, it'll be there. Yep, there we go. See that little knot? Come on, camera, it's really struggling, focus. There we go. So there you go, you're ready to sew now. All right, this is, I believe, step three? We're gonna have four, I think it's three. I kinda lost count. Um, but we're gonna put the uh, nylon strips, we're gonna sew it to the actual chest rig itself. Now I kinda started this one already, um, mainly just as a reminder, because I haven't hand sewn in a while, so. I was getting the bugs out, and I knew I was too embarrassed to look stupid on camera. So, <laughs> um, got a little practicing, and I think I'm good to go. But this next step, we're going to be 
uh, sewing both those nylon straps to the chest rig uh, to create your, your molly, essentially. Um, you're going to do it. It's going to be like four little uh, sewing rows a piece. So you're going to sew right at the end, as I've done here, on this end, and then an inch and a half in from each end. So one here, two, three, and four. And you're going to do the same with the top one as well. Um, I'm just going to show myself sewing just, just one of these. I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to roll montage of me doing 16 of these strips. <laughs> um, but you get the point. Since the nylon material and the material on the chest rig is rather thick, um, another pro tip for you, I like to use um, a small pair of pliers to manipul manipulate the needle as I'm sewing um, while doing this. Uh, it just makes it so much easier, pushing and then also kind of pulling, pulling the needle through and vice versa. Next, we're gonna make our extended magazine pouch covers. Um, this is the material, we're gonna make it from the material that you guys saved, hopefully saved, from your uh, grenade pouches. Um, this kind of material came from the, the body of the grenade pouches, and these two were actually from the, the covers of the grenade pouches that I repurposed. Um, we're actually gonna be sewing nylon strips to kind of make the, uh, the covers easier to, to pull back and uh, grab your magazine. The two that you make from the grenade pouch body is actually going to measure uh, three by three. So really you can use any, any of the material on here. So we'll just, um, actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pretty up the end right here a little bit first. I really like those raggedy ends. All right, so we're going to measure three by three. And just cut it out. Here.
There you go. Next, we're going to cut out the nylon flaps to make the pouches easier to manipulate. So I already pre-measured uh, two inches worth of nylon. I'm going to cut it out. Just like before, we're going to singe the ends. we go all right so this is the side that'll that'll face outward I like to I like to sew an inch of this and then I have an inch sticking out so on an inch right there all right so we'll sew this area right here as I've done, just like that. Pro tip, these little pins that come with most sewing kits are really good for holding material in place um, that you haven't sewn yet. This will be your last sewing step, and uh, I, I apologize for my voice, um, getting over being sick. Not sure if it's from the flu or a nasty cold or COVID or what, but really did a number on my voice. Now, the last sewing step is going to be uh, sewing your extra flap um, to the to the flaps that are already there, uh, just so it covers your your magazine more thoroughly, as I'm demonstrating here. And on, on the next step after this, uh, we'll be putting Velcro on the back, so then these, uh, these flaps actually stay closed. Should be pretty straightforward. Um, I just measured uh, an inch and a half up from the back of the chest rig, as you see here. So just an inch and a half up from here, that line right there. That's where we're going to sew that flap on there. And we're just going to sew kind of the perimeter of... The flap behind it you know just as I've done here I saved this last one for for demonstration purposes here so um, it should be pretty straightforward um, feel free to skip ahead uh, but if you want to see me uh, go ahead and sew this on uh, stick around
later. Congratulations, you're done sewing. Now, if you sewed by hand, how many times did you stab yourself? <laughs> I stabbed myself a few times the first time around. There's nothing like poking that needle through blindly, just hoping you're not going to stab your finger. But it's all part of the learning experience, I suppose. So there you go. Um, one little, I guess not really a pro tip, but um, I like to put a little bit of shugu um, and actually just kind of put it over the threads. I feel it just gives it another layer of protection. Um, I'll do the same to the flaps too. I'll put some shugu here, and maybe even on this one, and then on the other side as well. Um, just like I've done on this rig that I made prior. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't look the prettiest, but um, I think that layer of protection is, is well worth it. All right, next we're gonna put on our Velcro. Um, these are just two inch round uh, Velcro adhesive strips. I like to put the uh, softer, more felty side on the back side of the flap like so. And then eventually I'll be putting um, the coarser hook side of the Velcro um, somewhere, somewhere on the pouch like here. Now these are adhesive, so there is some, some glue on the back. But I don't really trust it. I don't think it's really going to hold after multiple uh, multiple pulls of, of your flaps. So I'm just going to slather this bad boy in a bunch of shoe goo. Get it all up in there. And then stick around. You can also use some little clips to really clamp it. Make sure that glue uh, really gets in there. All right, now once you've put the Velcro on the uh, back of the flaps here, next is to put the Velcro on, on the pouch itself. And what I like to do is take your magazine of choice. In this case, I'll be using this, uh, um, this chest rig for uh, AK mags. So go ahead and insert the AK magazine. And then I'll, I'll pull the flap over and just eyeball um, you know, where it's, where it's going to be sitting. So in this case, it's like right about there. <clears throat> and just like before, going to peel that and slather a bunch of shugu on here. and clamp it down. I'll use this one. So there we go. I put the rest of the Velcro on there and uh, also put two additional um, Velcro spots there for any miscellaneous patches I'd like to put on. But yeah, the last uh, last modification now is just to put that buckle on the back. All right, now getting the buckle on. 
This might be a little difficult just because I added some shugu to the to the threading. Maybe I can just kind of pull it through here. There we go. I don't think orientation matters all that much. I kind of like having the uh, female end on the left side and the buckle on the right side. There we go. There's one. All right, obviously just adjust this around your waist so there's there's no uh there's no take up there there you go and here's the final product now being these that these are so cheap and such a, a low barrier to entry uh, they really lend themselves well to uh, not only first time if this is your first chest rig, um, but even at that with a few with a few modifications, you can really turn this into something that's that's very practical and very useful. Um, now that you know how to sew and do a few other things, I mean these these things are really your real oyster. You know, make them make them how you want. Um, and being as they they're lightweight, they pack up nice, and I've got two of them now. Um, you know, next time you go to the range and you bring a buddy who doesn't have a chest rig, you know, you got, you got something for him to, to practice some reloads. And being as someone who, who likes tinkering and working on things, um, you know, I, I find these fun to, to work on and, and to customize. Now, I want to give uh, two channels uh, a shout out, not only Blue Jean Operator, but also, I hope I'm saying this correctly, but Zeus Outdoors channel. Um, they both have videos on uh, Tricom chest rigs, and I, I drew some inspiration from their videos uh, to not only making my own, but making my video as well. So, thanks guys. Um, I'm just an average guy, and uh, I'm going to go get some cough, lo cough lozenges, <laughs> cough drops lozenges, because uh, my, my throat's killing me. So, until next time, we'll see you later.